our guest speakers' uh, accomplishments over the years. And it reads like a book. Uh, so I said to myself, should I bring these five pages with me or should I just jot down a little something? But I said, no, I said, I'm going to take it to the heart. I'm going to go back to the 60s. And back in the 60s, you heard uh, John Daniels, Mia Daniels, just a few minutes ago talking about brothers who took care of the plot. Back in the 60s, there were some gentlemen in this time, the ministers. I could talk about uh, Reverend Cofield. I could talk about uh, Bishop Brooks. And naturally, I could talk about our guest speaker. Uh, back during the late 60s, mid 60s, when you heard me mention Dixwell and Henry, I was one of the rough boys in this time. And I thought that uh, I got tired of being called a boy. And they told, they, we were told by the older fellas that they were tired of being called boys at their age because they had many sons and grandchildren. But they were black, upright, standing men who were proud of their families and what they had done in their accomplishments. Now, you heard me mention Reverend Cofield, Bishop Brooks, and of course, I called him my godfather, Reverend Evans. Uh, he definitely took care of me. But the gentleman that's here today, I've watched him over the years very closely. I've visited uh, the New Testament church. One of his members is, is my granddaughter. Mm -hmm. Bishop Philpott has done so much for the Dixon community. He has put his heart and his soul in this community. And he's asked for nothing in return. So <coughs> they respect. And that's all we can give a person who puts his heart and soul into his work. So I would like to ask each one of you to stand as I introduce and bring to the pulpit Bishop.
Uh, I came into this community, uh, moved down years ago, and vacated a uh, grocery building, and then and started our church there, Christ Chapel New Testament Church, because uh, the owner of the place that we were renting from came down into this area to do business and said he was robbed of everything but his life. A group of men surrounded him and uh, took everything from him but his life. And so that really moved us and we said, well, let's go down. It was a vacated building here into this community and we decided to come down to uh, try to make a difference. Well, for a while that has happened. There was a difference, but now there are new things happening. And for example, we understand they're going to try to move in a uh, uh, pawn shop into this area. And uh, it, uh, it moves me to ask you to pray for us. And, uh, and somehow, with the wonderful and same advice of uh, Mayor Daniels here and others who have been experienced in this living, perhaps we can help save the, our community from the pawn shop students at Yale Divinity School, or at Yale College, as well as the Denver Community School, and people living in the neighborhood will be drastically affected by that, the presence of that pawn shop. And so that's on our heart as we talk about some of the great things that Dr. King accomplished. Of course, um, he greatly inspired all of us. Touched my heart, praise God, in wondrous ways, and if I stick to my notes, I'll be able to say how. <laughs> Um, but we give honor to God and the pastor who's away on the special cause of this great church, Pastor Scott. And uh, we, we make note of the fact that they've had some remarkable pastors here, great ministries here. And uh, we have been always touched by their ministry and uh, by their leadership in this community. Um, we now sit apart to remember the cause of justice and freedom that he so powerfully proclaimed in his living and also in his death. Uh, you know, the scripture says, you should know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And we believe that this was a man dedicated to the truth that all men created by God should learn to live together in love and there should be freedom and dignity in the human life and the human spirit. Uh, we believe that God did it and that uh, God intends for us to do it. And Dr. King, with his preaching and with his living, did much to further that cause for bringing us together in unity and in love. Um, he has really inspired us to write or to put together this, these books uh, years ago, I was so powerfully proclaimed, died for, uh, honoring his God and his, his countrymen and the cause of the truth that makes us free. Uh, his parents were dedicated soldiers of the cross, his father, a beloved uh, pastor called Daddy King. Uh, it was he that I was so pleased to meet when he came here, up here years ago years ago, and he spoke to me about how he had nurtured his son in the cause of uh, knowing that he was uh, a man, Jesus, my Savior, on the top of the King. Reverend Dr. Reverend, Reverend King Sr. was also a great and beloved father, preacher, and statesman for the Lord, and he and his gracious and faithful wife and mother were some of the reasons for the dedication and discipline of so great a preacher, statesman, and leader as Dr. Martin Luther King. We pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. It was unsettling to know that we are in a place I had never been that deep south before. And uh, so I thought I would get a good round of prayer. Mm -hmm. But early in the morning as we went there timidly to the tables to eat, who should come uh, coming up with a great smile and a look of victory, but none other than the late Dr. Martin Luther King. Uh, I was amazed at his decor. I was amazed 
at his stance. I was amazed at his spirit. It was such a, uh, a victorious smile he had, such an assurance he had. He had to get it from God. Mm. He had to get it from his up building. He must have gotten it, amen, from heaven. Mm -hmm. And as he looked at us and he shook, shook our hands, I really said, this man is for real. You know how we do. We, amen. I said, now he is, this man has seen, has met with God, where's the effect? He's, this man is a saint because of the fact he was risking his life for a, a cause that, that men and women, black and white, should love each other and should strive to come together to, to make this nation a better nation in this world, a better world. You know, after all, the Bible says it this way, from the Lord that he served, let your light so shine that men may see your good works. Glorify your Father, which is in heaven. We have an old song we sing. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let it shine, shine, shine. Well, after having that experience and coming back now, I felt uh, some part of liberation. I was satisfied to know that God did create a man like him and other men and women to make this a better world. And it would be good if we could get together, good that we should honor God's word and so that we should love one another. It would make us stronger as a people and more effective in our witness. For as Dr. King saw to us, we shall overcome one day. Well, amen, that, that impressed me. I was also impressed when Dr. King came up to Yale Divinity School. It was one of the turning points in my life in terms of ministry. I'll never forget it. Uh, when he, I, I, now that I'm in the 80s now, I, I lose track of some of our dates, you know, nowadays. And all these things come together so well. But when he came to Yellow Divinity School, that is where they train preachers, right? Yes. I had never seen such a response in all my life as Dr. King came and spoke. I saw professors long here distinguished professors crying on each other's shoulders. And Dr. King spoke. Uh, there was such an anointing, such a, an aura of power there, of manhood there, that I really thought that maybe we were going to have a great revival start right up in Yale Divinity School. <laughs> professors, long hair, you know, and uh, erudite, becoming like a crying young Men and, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, men who were repenting, perhaps, of their being apart from one another. You remember Dr. King's song, We Shall Overcome? We shall overcome one day, deep in my heart, I do believe. We shall overcome someday, black and white together, black and white together, someday, deep in my heart, I do believe. We shall overcome someday. Well, it was there that I had made up my mind now that uh, praise God, I had to do more than just go to school. That somehow in my community when I would graduate, I would do what the Bible said when it said, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. In fact, it's in the song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. As we graduated, uh, even before we graduated, in fact, it was at Yale that I decided to get this book. Second edition was a little uh, more, I suppose, representative, as we would say. And uh, this book has been in print ever since. And I don't think the nation offering to the world through the Declaration of Independence the most eloquent and unequivocal, unequivocal expression of, of the dignity of man ever set forth in a social political document. In technology, America, America has produced many bridges to span the seas and skyscraping buildings to kiss the skies. Through the Wright brothers, he has given the world airplanes and made it possible for man to annihilate distance and circumscribe time. Through medical science, her numerous wonder drugs have cured many dread diseases and really prolonged the life of man. America, but is a commentary on 200 and more years of, of chattel
slavery. And on 20 million Negro men and women deprived of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That but stands for a practical materialism that is often more interested in things than in values. So almost every affirmation of greatness is followed not by a period simulating, symbolizing completeness, but by a comma punctuating its nagging partial, par, partialness. Many of our greatest suffered civilizations are great only in certain aspects. Many of our greatest men are great only in certain ways and are low and degrading in other regards. Yet life should be strong, he said, and complete on every side. And a complete life has three dimensions suggested in our text, length, breadth, and height. The length of life is the inward drive to achieve one's personal ends and ambitions, an inward concern for one's own welfare and achievements. The breadth of life is the outward concern for the welfare of others. The height of life is the upward reach for God. Life at its best is a coherent triangle. At one angle is the individual person. At the other angle are other persons. At the tip top is the infinite person, God. Without the due development of each part of the triangle, no life can be complete. And then praise God that truth and shall make us free. Uh, you know the song means that and say we shall overcome. It says it this way, come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord, for your sins be a prayer, David, the prayer was one of repentance, greet me, a clean heart, O God, and we do a